Ohayo! My name is Minami Toku and welcome to a more serious vlog. Today is the 27th of December by the time this video goes up and I wanted to do something for years now for this day, for this particular day because it's a special day for me at least and my family because today, five years ago, something happened that just changed my life, our lives. So since I started making YouTube videos, I thought I would do a vlog about it, just to record my thoughts on what happened and, well, just to commemorate that day. And also, maybe I can help some people with my thoughts by telling what happened and how, how I cope with it. But here's a little disclaimer. If you're sensible to the topics of death, depression, struggling with that, you might not want to watch this video. I'll be sure to include a positive message at the end. Uh, I'm probably going to put the timestamp somewhere here around or at least in the description. So please look for it if you only hear for the positive message. So here is the story what happened on the 27th of December uh, 2011. But first I have to go a little bit back in time, well like 20 years back in time, because my parents divorced when I was around five and I've been living with my stepfather and my mother ever since. My mother didn't technically marry her boyfriend, but just because it gets complicated otherwise, I'm just referring to him as my stepfather for now. Actually, in 2011, I started going to university. That was in summer. And I also moved out and moved in with some friends. And, and I was also very busy with university because studying here is definitely harder than in other places, especially if you if your major is Japanese studies or Chinese studies or whatever. Well, I went for the Japanese studies and I was really, really busy during my first semester at university, like figuring everything out and I had to study real hard, especially before Christmas for the finals. Well, actually my family is scattered throughout the country and all over the world. So Christmas ha always has been a really, really busy time for me. Well, you see, I, I was incredibly busy, but I actually did enjoy all of this because like, I, I, I really got to see all my family and stuff. So what we did th that year we planned, my mother, her boyfriend, my stepfather and I, three people, we planned to go on a ski trip on the 27th, like a one day trip. There are special buses that bring you somewhere for a day and then take you back. So we went on that, uh, on the ski trip and yeah, well, let's say we were, we were three people when we arrived and we went, uh, and when we went home, we were only two people. Because, well, my stepfather had a heart attack just in the middle of, on the slope there, just fell down. Well, I didn't actually see, see him falling down. I was, I drove downhill and waited there because, well, I was the fastest one with my snowboard. And the other two were like, well, more beginner uh, with skiing. So I would just uh, to just go down one hill, have a little fun and then just wait for them to come. And I waited there. I, I saw my mother standing up on, on the hill and just looking around and I didn't know what, what had happened. And it just was, yeah, maybe they're talking to someone or whatever. But I actually got kind of nervous because I had a feeling that something it wasn't right. Something was off and I couldn't point the finger to it. Then I saw my mother just running and disappearing somewhere. And then after 
I think I, I don't know how much time actually passed, but after a while she came back and was like, oh, you, you got to come up the hill. Uh, your stepfather just just fell down. I was like, OK, if, if she's running like that and yelling in that kind of voice, I, I'm actually really sensible to voice changes and stuff. So I know I knew immediately that something was wrong was terribly wrong so I took my snowboard and run literally run up the hill like uh, there was that mu at least that much snow uh, I can't show you but there was a huge pile of snow there and I just plowed through all that snow and I couldn't breathe I couldn't breathe at all at the top but then I, I saw my stepfather lying there in the snow in the middle of the slope and I looked in his eyes, his eyes were open. He received CPR and stuff at that time from people who were there. And I knew when I looked into his eyes, I knew that he was dead. Like there's, a, there's kind of an expression in your eyes. I, I, I can't describe it, but I, when I looked at him, I, I just knew he was dead and not with us anymore, but they still tried to revive him. And, well, you gotta know this thing about me, when, when something, when an emergency situation happens, my brain just turns off any emotions and I just think logically. I don't know why, but I, I can only think logically. Uh, I had no emotions at that time, I was only thinking like, I have to get my mother to calm down. I have to get all the people out of the way because there were still skiers and snowboarders coming down the slope and already hitting the flock of people that was there. So I just prepared everything and my mother just run, literally run in circles. And I just told her, just, you're a smoker, just smoke a cigarette, calm down, sit down, do whatever calms you down. And I was just organizing kind of everything around it. And then I saw that the, that the helicopter came and I was securing all, all the jackets, all the stuff. And when the helicopter came, they, they just, uh, well, they, they tried to revive him, to revive him with uh, C CPR and also uh, the thing that shocks with the electroshock thing, I don't know what's it called in English. And well, there were actually other people who helped calming my mother down a little bit. But well, in the end, they unfortunately they couldn't save him. So he was lying there, dead, ice cold, on the in the middle of the slope. And actually, the helicopter can only is only allowed to transport living still living patients so the helicopter couldn't take my stepfather with, with it on board unfortunately because they had other emergencies and stuff so they had to transport him on a on a little sleigh and we also had to get down somewhere but there were all the people there were really really nice to us they helped us uh, drive down with skis and snowboard and well we eventually got down and the police was waiting there just interviewing us well, what happened and making sure that the that well they had to make sure that the, this wasn't a crime or something and they they also brought the, my stepfather's corpse to to a doctor and he confirmed yeah he had a he had a heart attack and he is dead that's what happened on the 27th of December, fi exactly five years ago today. I probably would call it the worst day of my life until now. But what happened after, uh, it was, let's say it just was really, really amazing and unbelievable. Because first of all, he wasn't a Christian. so. Getting a funeral organized for him was just a pain in the a in the ass because no no one wanted to do a funeral for him and eventually a, 
a friend of my real father. He is actually a priest, and he he kind he was so kind and offered to do the funeral speech and to organize everything for us. I actually broke down for like five minutes on the slope. I cried for five minutes, and I told myself, "No, I'm not gonna cry anymore. This has happened. I accept it, and I I'm just." there for my mother because she needs all the support she can get. I think I did a little bit too much because I, I, I didn't sleep well for three weeks. I was just running around, uh, didn't eat much and stuff. So after three weeks, my, my friends were like, you, you gotta have a time out. Just come to our house, ha have a nice evening with us and just relax, get away from everything, just get your mind off of this and just relax. We have a nice, well, it was a nice time at their house. I'm still very grateful that they did this to me, for me. And because I was so stressed out for like three weeks, I, I just collapsed. My, my body just gave up and well, I couldn't stand up because I was dizzy all the time for like three, almost three days. Well, I couldn't stand up uh, after two days and walk around real slow. So they took care of me for like two to three days. I, my memories of that time are actually kind of hazy. So I don't know how long it was, but I, I think it was for a weekend and they, they had they had uh, other visitors, like their grandparents were there and stuff. And they just took the time to care for me. And that, that was just amazing. After all that happened, we, we got so much support from other people, from friends. That was just amazing. And it also kind of helped me to stay positive about everything because basically my mother didn't didn't work at that time she wanted to get back into work because I, I moved out but he he was bringing the income and money and so we, we, we actually lost all our income we had no income and my mother eventually started to work again later and another thing you need to know about me because of other things that happened in the past and, and in my childhood. I, I don't want to give up. I'm not good at giving something up. If I set my mind to something, I will do it, no matter what comes. So also that, 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 that's why I, my body broke down three weeks after that, because I set my mind to help, or help out as much as I can. And I didn't get enough sleep because of that. My mind, when I saw my stepfather lie, lying dead on the slope, I was just thinking, no matter what happens, I, I, I just got to do this. I'm not giving up. Not ever. No matter what happens, like my, my, whole, my house could burn down and and every, everyone around me could be dying, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up. That's just how my mind works. This actually helped me through the whole process, but it was also kind of hindering me because I, I was determined not to tell anyone except my close friends, so that when I went back to university, my mother also said, no, you, you, can't, give, you can't give up your education, you cannot give up on that. We, we got we got to pull through this somehow and I actually got a scholarship for that but because I didn't tell anyone not, not my professors not my teachers not even my my classmates well I think some of them know now but back then in the first semester well actually my second semester but the first semester after after what happened I didn't tell any anyone at university because I, I didn't first of all I didn't want to shock them and second I also had that mindset that I don't want to bother people 
my overall grades were decent, I think, but I, I failed my I failed the Japanese class, and I actually had to redo that a, a year later, which cost me a year. Well, I I had to stu study a year longer because of what happened because I just because I, I just w wanted to continue and tell nobody about what happened. Yeah, I had to study a, lo a year longer because of that. Because I just was so stubborn. Also, what helped me through all of that, I have it here. It's in this plastic bag. Is a necklace. Can you see it? Yep, you can see it. So, it's supposed to be a feather and you can see it is broken. So this necklace was, was actually my stepfather's and it's one of the last few things I still got from him. He wore that a lot, like for years he wore that thing. And I figured I, I, just, I just wanted to have something from him on my body somewhere. And I saw that necklace and I just, I think I wore it for like four years straight. There, there wasn't, I can't remember a day when I wasn't wearing this necklace. Because I, I, I just got that feeling that he was, he was still with us. That he was just here like nothing ever happened. And, and it, it gave me some, the feeling of security. It helped me go through all of this. That I, also my mindset that I can do this. This necklace helped me through a lot of stuff, actually, because anytime I, I felt anxious or was nervous, I just grabbed onto that necklace and I could calm down again. On this day, a year and a week ago, it broke in half exactly a week before, before his fourth death anniversary. I was incredibly sad about this because I didn't know what what I should do now because I just lost my my last security blanket but then when I thought about it for a longer time I was like probably I was I was too much relying on the necklace I was I was still living in the past because I had this necklace on all the time and it kept me from doing the things I wanted to sure it was it gave me the feeling of safety, but it also held, held me back from actually doing things I wanted to do. It, it kept me secure and insecure on the same time. I haven't looked at this necklace in a year. And when I, when I look back over all of this, it was good that this necklace broke in the end. I think it, I think it was good because it, 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 it taught me to stand on my own two feet again. That I can do stuff, that I can, that I can do whatever I want. Also, I'm still attached to this necklace. I just got to keep these things around. Just for safety, just for remembering who my stepfather was. What he did for me. Because he, he treated me, he treated me like I was his real daughter and that's something amazing. Since he died, I reflected on what I had and I, I, I never, I never actually told him how much he meant to me. And yeah, I never told him how much he meant to me and this actually almost breaks my heart now. I, I wanted to tell him so much more. I want to tell him how, how I did at university, how I did at martial arts. I, I just want to tell him about my life. But that's not going to happen because he isn't here anymore. And I have to stand on, on my own two feet. And thank God I'm stubborn enough to not give up. I don't know where the strength came from at that time, but I don't know. I just, I just stood up again. 
after falling after falling down you gotta stand up again there's a japanese proverb fall down seven times stand up eight times if you fall down don't don't don't, don't keep lying on the floor well maybe you gotta rest a little bit but as, as long as I st keep standing up times and times again I believe you can do every anything you want to. I believe everyone can do anything they want to if they just keep standing up, if they just keep not giving up. I'm only 25 years old but I don't know, I, I think I have the experience of, of a 70 year old because of all, all that stuff that happened. I mean I lost multiple people during my life. Uh, the neighbor's house just burned down. My mother just cut herself with, with a knife. She, she's fine, by the way. She had surgery and is at home now. Through all the bullying I went through in my, in my primary school and middle school. I don't know, so much happened and I, and I just can sit here and people, well, people actually compare me, often compare me to uh, a Zen monk who is just meditating there, just being calm and there could be a hurricane, a huge storm, storm going around him, but the monk still keeps calm and meditating. All, through all this crazy stuff that happened in my life, I learned to stay calm, to stay positive, to just realize that time doesn't actually heal. It's still hard for me to talk about what happened, but we, we, as time goes on, you just kind of learn how to deal with stuff through your experience. It, it still hurts. This, this wound is there's still a huge scar emotionally, but you you just can kind of cope with it. You, 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 time teaches you how to cope with life, actually. Also, I think. Ryan Higa once made a video about how he stays positive and what he explained there I, 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 I kind of have the same mindset as him as far as that goes and it just impacted me and I think he, he said something on the line like aim high, have a, have, set your goal high but have low expectations if I would get a simple example, uh, like well, when I have an appointment with someone, like when I when I meet when I have a meet up with my friends, uh, I mean I go there on time. I'm actually quite early, all the time. But I mean my goal is to have fun with them, with my friends and just spend time with them having a good time but th th that's my goal but my ex expectations are actually quite low like uh, they, some, like they, they might not show up or we might have an argument or something really negative happens so I kind of prepare my mind beforehand that something's going wrong and if something goes wrong I am prepared, but I'm actually looking for, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not staying negative in my mind. I just prepare for the worst thing that can happen, but I'm looking forward to, I hope that the best thing can happen. Like that we have fun, that we can go somewhere, that we just have a nice time together, some bonding time and stuff. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm looking to that. But I'm also have in my back of in the back of my mind I have also have a plan if something goes wrong. Even in, in the most negative situation, in the most dark of times, I always look for something positive. Even if it if it's a tiny, tiny, tiny ray of light, I look for that. And I walk after that ray of light. I just I just set my mind to that one positive little tiny thing and I walk in that direction. And 
if I keep doing that, like other positive things will happen automatically, kinda. And you, even in the darkest of times when your thoughts are all negative, like I, I just set my mind to that ray of light, and it helps me stay positive throughout the day, throughout every day, throughout my life, and that kind of makes me not want to give up ever. I think I, I told everything I wanted to tell, but just this one thing, if you feel down, if you're in a dark place right now, I mean it's Christmas season and holiday season and all, but I know that there's actually a lot of hidden negativity around. Like people want to concentrate on the positivity right now and don't look to the negative or people that are, have negative thoughts or are in a dark place right now. I know there's lots and lots of people who are in a negative, who are in a dark, dark place right now. I, I was there too. So I feel with you. If you're in a dark place, I, I absolutely feel with you. If you have a negative time right now, I encourage you, talk to someone or don't, don't, don't just keep sitting in, in your home, in your bed, wherever you are. If you possibly can, go out there, talk to someone. It doesn't matter to whom. It can even be down in the comments here if you don't have anyone else to talk to. But you, you also can talk to the camera like I am doing. You, well, if you want to upload it somewhere or show someone, please feel to do that. But actually I realized even if I don't upload this video, just talking, saying things out loud, it, it, it just, it just, you, you kind of get it off your mind, get it out there. And for me personally, it makes me feel better. And I believe if you talk about it, it can make you feel better too. So I just want to encourage all of you to not ever give up, to always search the tiny little ray of light in the darkness, to go after it. If you fall down, just stand up again or at least call help for, for someone to help you stand up again. Also what I learned, don't, don't, don't keep these things to yourself. It, th this, this thing has been boiling in my heart, in my soul for like five years now. And I haven't talked openly about, about what happened actually. And I just feel relieved that I did so. So I just encourage you to, to, to say these things out loud. It doesn't matter if you talk to a camera, if you talk to someone or just to yourself. Just, just say this stuff out loud. And it helped, it personally helped me through a lot of things. Also, what happened on the 27th of December, five years ago. Because this is the five year anniversary of that day, I wanted to make this special video to, to get it off my mind, to just, just, to just close that file up, to store it, to not, not to forget it, but, but just to close it and keep it somewhere. And when I, when I feel like it, to just open it up again and look at it. Like, like I did with this necklace. I stored it away for a whole year. And I thought today was the time to look at it again, to reflect on what happened. And also to tell you guys about what happened and hopefully to encourage some of you who are in a dark place right now or don't know how to cope with, with, a, with a great loss or just to cope with negativity. I hope I could, well, I'm not a professional, but I hope I could spread some positivity. I think I've said everything that I wanted to. If there's anything else that I want to, to let you guys know, I will write it in the description below. Look forward to another ga silly gaming video tomorrow. 
And I actually hope that I can spread positivity with my silliness around the world. Just to take off your mind. You as a viewer, that you can take off your mind just for a little bit for, from life everything that happens around you and just sit down and and have some positive input i hope i hope at least so so thanks everyone for watching this video i will see you in the next one until then keep standing up and know that i believe in you Us.